Hello, my name is Dr. Tasha and I'm a breast cancer surgeon. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something most women will know all about, and that's breast pain, which is also known as nostalgia. So yes, if you are a woman, most likely you have experienced breast pain and you are not alone. Between 70 to 80% of women will experience breast pain at some point in their lives. You'll be doing your day-to-day -day business and then out of nowhere, you'll have a sharp shooting pain in your breast that stops you in your tracks. Or you may be experiencing a dull ache that is always there in the background, but at times can be really uncomfortable and may even wake you up at night. Your breast is heavy, there's a burning sensation, a prickly feeling and even itchiness. And all of these symptoms come under the umbrella of breast pain. The thing is, how can you tell if the breast pain you are experiencing is something you should be worrying about or whether it's something very normal. In this video, I'll be talking about the different kinds of breast pains, the reasons behind it, and when you should seek medical review. So first of all, let's talk about the three different types of breast pain. And they are cyclical breast pain, non-cyclical breast pain, and extra mammary pain, which is essentially pain that doesn't originate from the breast at all. Cyclical breast pain. As the name suggests, it is related to your menstrual cycle and it occurs in premenopausal women. This is the commonest type of breast pain and accounts for two thirds of all breast pain cases. It is normally diffuse and generalized and affects normally both breasts, but may be more intense in one breast, especially in the upper outer quadrant of the breast. The pain is described as a dull ache, heaviness and even throbbing. And it would normally start and slowly increase in intensity before the start of the period and then dissipates once the period starts. The hormonal changes increases the sensitivity of the breast and so, you know, pain related to your menstrual cycle is very normal and not worrying and it's considered to be clinically not significant. But the effect of this pain can be quite debilitating and it has been suggested that only about 14% of women will get complete resolution of symptoms but at least around 40% will get resolution at menopause. The cause is likely to be hormonal, as I mentioned. And logically, you'd assume that the fluctuations in your hormone levels can cause increased sensitivity of the breast, hence the pain. Now let's talk about non-cyclical breast pain. This is actually less common, and it accounts for about a third of breast pain cases. This is when the pain is intermittent and non-cyclical. In other words, it is not related to your menstrual cycle and it's usually experienced by women in their 40s and 50s or in their postmenopausal years. Unlike cyclical pain, this type of non-cyclical pain usually affects just one breast and it is usually more localized, affecting just one quadrant or part of the breast. Women describe it as a burning sensation, soreness, a dull ache and even a drawing sensation and also itchiness which can be really, really annoying. Again, hormonal causes is likely, but there are other possible causes, and they include certain medications such as the pill, the oral contraceptive pill that is, or HRT, some antidepressants, as well as some antihypertensive drugs and cardiac drugs. And lastly, extra mammary breast pain. This is a pain that actually mimics breast pain, but actually doesn't originate from the breast at all. Because the breast sits on top of the chest wall, it doesn't come as a surprise that the possible causes are chest wall related. And these include conditions such as costochondritis, which is inflammation of the ribs, arthritis, chest wall muscle sprain, and there are other causes which may include things like oesophageal spasm and even cardiac issues. So when is breast pain clinically felt to be significant? This is when breast pain happens and is associated with other symptoms, such as a lump, skin changes, nipple discharge, breast inflammation, swelling or redness. The incidence of breast cancer in women who presents with breast pain only without the presence of other symptoms is very low, and it ranges from 0% to 3%. And so the majority of the time, breast pain that occurs without the presence of those symptoms is nothing to worry about. So, what can you do to help with your breast pain symptoms? For quick and hopefully immediate relief, you can simply put topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory such as ibuprofen. This should give instant relief. You can also take simple pain relief such as you know, paracetamol or ibuprofen tablets if you like. Number two, wear an appropriately fitted bra. Now, if you haven't been to a bra fitter recently, then it's something you probably ought to consider. 
This is especially true if you are fuller breasted. Also, to prevent breasts from doing their own thing at night and move around, you may also want to consider wearing either a bra or a snug fitting vest to again provide support. The better the support, the better it will help. For more long-term effects, you can try number three, which is lifestyle changes, and that's reducing alcohol and caffeine. Now, there are limited studies to show that these work, but actually a lot of people say it does. Number four, complementary therapies such as acupuncture, aromatherapy, CBD, and relaxation techniques have also helped many women with their symptoms. Number five is evening primrose oil tablets or star flower oil tablets. There is evidence to suggest that having low levels of an essential fatty acid called GLA, which is gamma linolenic acid, can contribute to breast pain. So evening primrose oil and star flower oil tablets contain GLA, and that's why it's been recommended. Although there is little published evidence to explain how these work, many women are helped by taking these. It is important to realize though that this is a long-term strategy and you may need to take it for at least three to four months to see any benefit and it may not even help you. But you're not gonna know until you try. GLA has a few side effects though. It may cause miscarriages and so you shouldn't use this if you are pregnant or trying to conceive. It may also increase the tendency to bleed, so you may want to talk to your doctor or your GP if you are on blood thinning medication. And lastly, although the evidence is still unclear, we advise people with epilepsy not to take GLA. And number six, change medication. If the pain coincided with a new oral contraceptive pill, for example, then perhaps have a chat with your GP about changing this. Similarly, if the pain coincided with uh, HRT use, then again, have a conversation with your GP. Now, if you continue to experience breast pain symptoms, or if you have anything worrying at all, then you should go and see a breast doctor. You can check out a video I have made which describes all about what happens in a breast clinic, so at least you know what to expect, and that can prepare you for your visit. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.